of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, a God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, uh, happy November. Um, this month, we're obviously reminded to give pause and gather with friends and family and loved ones to give thanks. And I'd like to take a moment uh, to give my heartfelt thanks to you, the town of Isla Boaters, for your, uh, once again, placing your trust and confidence in me so that we can continue working together for our town, your community. Um, keeping in the spirit of thankfulness, I know many of us are excited to celebrate Thanksgiving next week. The start of the holidays is truly the beginning of joyous season of celebration. Unfortunately, the reality is that now more than ever, food insecurity has impacted our communities. And as inflation has caused gas prices to rise and, and other utilities, et cetera, so does the cost of essentials, leaving many reliant on food pantries to feed their families. Thankfully, in the town, we are so fortunate to have so many dedicated to helping. Uh, we want to thank Isla Food for Hope and the generosity of our town employees. This year, we will be distributing over 800 boxes of love, baskets and packages filled with every Thanksgiving uh, Day essential to those in need. These baskets will be handed out tomorrow and distributed to members in our community who will truly feel the love and generosity of all those who help. For more information on Islip Food for Hope and for continued ways to get involved, we direct you to islipfoodforhope.org. Um, with the holiday season, certainly we will turn to thinking about shopping uh, and that will be in full swing. And we'd like to encourage everyone to join in supporting our local small businesses on Small Business Saturday, uh, which as everyone knows is the Saturday after Thanksgiving, a little early this year on November 25th. Also uh, on the following Monday, our Town of Isa Youth Bureau will be kicking off their to holiday toy drive collections and donations of unwrapped new toys can be dropped off either at Town Hall uh, West at 401 or here in Town Hall. They can be dropped off here uh, anytime during the day. And also we will be participating again in the Salvation Army Angel Tree Program. Lastly, as uh, the music in shops and around town starts playing holiday music, let's keep the fol following holiday happenings in mind. And we've got a lot going on and I wanna thank our Department of Parks Recreation and Cultural Affairs for all of their efforts in helping pull this together. On Saturday, December 2nd, from 12 to 8, please join us at the Isaac Town Hall parking lot just to the east of us um, as we have the Town of Islip Holiday Market. Uh, Santa's North Pole mailbox will be open for kids to drop in their important letters to Santa. And uh, please swing by Brookwood Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. for a special preview of our holiday light show. And on Saturday, December 2nd, come to the market, stay for the parade, uh, sponsored by the Islip Chamber of Commerce. They'll have their annual Santa Comes to Town holiday parade and tree lighting. Parade begins at 4.30, tree lighting at 5. And on Sunday, December 3rd, uh, in West Islip, the annual Festival of Lights celebration hosted by the American Legion, where Higby and Newtall meet uh, in downtown West Islip. And starting on Tuesday, the 5th, our fourth annual free holiday lights drive through kicks off at Brookwood Hall. The light show operates on Tuesdays and Thursday nights and uh, from 5 to 8 p.m and runs through December 28th. Again, admission is free, but we ask if you care to, to bring a donation of a uh, non-perishable food item. Additionally, on Thursday, the 7th at five, the town will be hosting our annual Town of Islip Menorah Lighting 
fight in front of town hall here. And lastly, on Friday, December 8th, come drive through the beautifully decorated grounds of Brookwood Hall and stay for a featured movie presentation, our drive-in holiday movie, The Grinch. Uh, it'll start at seven and again, uh, non-perishable food donations will be collected. So you can check out all of the events always on our website, isopny.gov. So having said all of that, we will begin with, uh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We will officially call the meeting uh, to order and uh, there are no public hearings, so we will go right to the public portion. And uh, we do have a number of cards of people who have uh, expressed the desire to address the board and just to remind everybody, this is not a question and answer. If you have uh, comments or issues that you care to bring forward, we're here to listen and you have three minutes to do so. Our first speaker, speaker I'm sorry, is Peter Lombardo. Good afternoon, thank you. My name is Peter Lombardo. I am the owner of a twin engine pipe of Seneca that is hangered at November Romeo Halstead at Islip MacArthur Airport. I use my plane for personal pleasure flying as well as flying for PALS and United States Coast Guard. As a pilot for PALS, which stands for Pilot Airlift Services, I will be I will be tasked to fly to remote airports and pick up patients requiring life-saving chemotherapy treatments or other medical service that can only be administered at major hospitals such as CHOP in Philadelphia or Boston Children's Hospital. I once had the opportunity to pick up a live kidney in Washington, D.C. and transport it to Boston Logan for a live organ transplant. Uh, transplant. As pilot of the United States Coast Guard, I fly in the capacity of an auxiliary performing logistics missions, uh, search and locate, ice patrols, and maritime domain awareness. Logistics is moving people and parts up and down the eastern shore of the United States. Search and locate is when an overdue voter is reported. We go out and fly the primary search patterns to help locate the overdue voter. Ice patrols consist of flying the Hudson and Connecticut rivers in the winter time to photograph and document ice on those two rivers. The importance of this work with the Coast Guard is, uh, is to work with the Coast Guard icebreakers keep the waterways open for commerce, such as heating oil, coal, and salt for the roads in the winter time. MDA is a function of the Coast Guard to keep our shores safe from terrorists. Whenever a suspect boat lingers offshore, it is picked up by satellite and sent to multiple government agencies to investigate. When the Coast Guard gets this alert, it's the auxiliary planes that are first to go and investigate. So what is the importance of keeping November Romeo open and accessible to me and the general aviation community. As I stated before, many of my missions with the Coast Guard and PALS don't come with mo much warning or lead time. I have been called by both at 6 a.m. and been up in the air at 6.30 a.m. Aircraft engines can be a little finicky to start in cool and cold weather. So to counter acts of cold start, my plane is equipped with engine preheaters, oil heaters, and cabin heaters. <laughs> These heaters are plugged into the electrical system at the uh, hangar where my plane is stored. Without the preheaters, it would be very, very difficult to start the pit, piston aircraft engine in the winter time. As a result, many of these missions would have been postponed or canceled altogether. If I no longer have access to my heated hangar at November Romeo, I will be forced to relocate my plane to an outside storage area where on the airport without convenience of electricity to keep my plane ready to go at a moment's notice. I asked the town board to consider the ramifications of shutting down the access of Hotel Taxiway and November Romeo. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next speaker, Nicholas Constantine. Good afternoon. My name is Nicholas Constantine. I'm also an aircraft owner and a tenant at the November Romeo facility. I'd like to read a letter from the a AOPA organization, Aircraft Owners Pilots Association, uh, related to this matter and support of November Romeo. Uh, dear Supervisor Carpenter and members of the ISLIP Town Board, my name is Sean Collins, and I am an Eastern Regional Manager of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, AOPA. We are world's largest aviation membership organization representing the general aviation interests of more than 300,000 aircraft owners and pilots across the country, including more than 9,000 in New York. 
On behalf of these members, the AOBA is urging the town of Iceland to act quickly to ensure reasonable access terms are secured to prevent the loss of an important aircraft hangar storage facility and the economic activity of 48 aircraft. This letter seeks to call attention to an ongoing issue between the Long Island Gotha Airport, ISC, and November Romeo LLC, a private fuel defense facility, aircraft storage facility, that houses 48 aircraft on property adjacent to ISC. The aforementioned parties have failed to come to terms as required by the FAA with a reasonable access agreement that will permit November Romeo LLC tenants to account for 21% of ISLIP light general aviation aircraft activity to continue to access ISP while providing pilots much needed access to aircraft storage, which is in severe short supply. In 2021, completed extensive surveys on general aviation storage hangar availability and learned that the hangars are in high demand due to an increasing short supply. In fact, 71% of aircraft owners were forced to wait six months or more than two years to gain access to a hangar. This increasing inability of airports to accommodate aircraft storage represents a direct loss of economic activity as private aircraft owners who utilize their aircraft for business and pleasure fly an average of 150 flight hours annually. November Romeo's 48 tenants represent 21% of INC's general aviation activity that will be lost unless reasonable terms are agreed between ISC, which the town of Iceland sponsors, and November Romeo. Please act swiftly to secure reasonable access terms that require the minimum standard necessary for reconstructing November Romeo's taxiway and to prevent the loss of hangar access and economic activity. Thank you for your time and consideration of this important matter. For questions, a strong Collins is available at the above number. Um, and the secondary letter uh, is from the um, Experimental Aircraft Association, which is also a world leader in recreational aircraft as international members, uh, 286,000 people in 100 countries. Uh, they also sent supporting letters, uh, which I don't have time to, of course, elaborate on. Thank you. Good afternoon, board. My name is Randy Sachs. I'm here as the tenant of the Halstead Ramp, a privately owned property with access to MacArthur Airport via a short taxiway. Many airports throughout our country hold occasional open house days every year. Also, for breakfast, maybe a barbecue lunch to allow the community to meet pilots to see really what goes on there, maybe even get a free ride. Bayport is one of these airports that do this. These are not possible at MacArthur Airport due to TSA regulations, but I would like to enlighten you about some of the activities at Halstead. We have some pilots who fly angel flights or pals flights, like the first gentleman said. These pilots donate their time, their aircraft, and absorb all expenses to transport adults and children to faraway hospitals for treatment or surgeries that they can't get locally. I personally flew a mission with a friend of mine to Boston to transport a woman who's visiting her young daughter who's being treated for cancer. We flew her to Virginia. Without these pilots, people like her could not support her daughter in that need. She didn't have the means nor the time to be able to do that. That's just one of hundreds. We also have a pilot who uses helicopter to deliver goods and supplies to areas ravaged by Superstorm super Sandy and other floods when roads and bridges were washed out. There was no other way to access these areas. Again, all volunteer. We have pilots who are mentoring aspiring pilots to supplement their formal training at nearby flight schools. We also mentor high school kids who are involved with STEM programs in high school. This is important for safety as well as helping out with the widely reported pilot shortage. I myself have transported dozens of animals, mainly dogs, from kill shelters in the southeastern states up to adoptive agencies on the for the end adopter. Many of these animals will be killed if not for our help. Once recently, I picked up two rabbits from a town shelter in central New Jersey and flew them to Syracuse, where their shelter does not euthanize rabbits, only adopts them out. Again, if all of these flights are absorbed, and all of these flights are absorbed by us, and there is a huge nationwide hangar shortage especially on Long Island. Very simply, if we are displaced, we have nowhere to go. I just wanted to point out that it's just not for flying for fun. Some very good, important work is performed by many of us. Thank you. Next speaker, Louis Fennick. Thank you. Supervisor Carpenter and esteemed board members, 
I'm Lieutenant Colonel Lou Fennec of the Civil Air Patrol. I served as commander for Long Island Group for the past eight years. <clears throat> as the auxiliary of the U.S. Air Force, Civil Air Patrol provides many services that help keep Long Islanders safe, including search and rescue, wildfire support, boating, Coast Guard support, and national communications. Our motto is volunteers serving America's communities, saving lives, and shaping futures. Our members selflessly devote their time, energy, and expertise towards the well-being of their community, while also promoting aviation and related fields through aerospace education. Civil Air Patrol's award-winning aerospace education program promotes aerospace, aviation, and STEM-related careers with engaging standards based on hands-on curriculum and activities. It shapes the experiences and aspirations of youth, both inside and outside of CAP's cadet program. Civil Air Patrol's cadet program is open to young adults from 12 years old. It transforms youth into dynamic Americans and aerospace leaders through a curriculum that focuses on leadership, aerospace, fitness, and character. As cadets participate in these four elements, they advance through a series of achievements, earning honors and increased responsibilities along the way. Many of the nation's astronauts, pilots, engineers, and scientists first explored their careers through CAP. One of the key elements of our success has been the facilities we op occupy at Long Island MacArthur Airport. We use this facility for the training of our members, mission-based for any of the numerous missions that we undertake, and access to the airport for our pilots and their crews. Civil Air Patrol has been a tenant at Long Island MacArthur since 1966, allowing us to perform these missions to our community. Access to Long Island MacArthur has been provided on the hotel taxiway via the property owned by November Romeo LLC, formerly Halstead. Civil Air Patrol has the standing easement agreement, which allows us to trans transit new, uh, November Romeo property to access hotel taxiway. This agreement was granted by Mr. Fred Cotzi of November Romeo at no charge to CAP and is essential to our mission. We appreciate the opportunity to address your board. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Uh, next speaker, Chris Mayon. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, board. I'm a tenant of Halstead Hines at 1640 uh, Lincoln Avenue. I'm here to urge the town to resolve the issue between MacArthur Airport and Fred Costa, owner of the property referred to as Halstead, which provides hangars and tie downs for 50 aircraft, including those of the Civil Air Patrol. The administration at MacArthur Airport is now threatening to block access from our hangars to the airport runways. Please realize we're talking about a 40 foot wide road, less than a tenth of a mile long, that connects our hangars to the airport. This access has been in place since 1966. And here's where my questions begin. Why? Why would, why would we all of a sudden negate this access? Upon initial access, one would think it's money. But that can't be the case. The FAA advises that access fees charged to off-property hangars must be, and I quote, comparable to those charged to airport tenants. And Fred, our landlord, has agreed to pay those fees to MacArthur Airport. Next, would, next one would think it's related to the cost to maintain the roadway. However, Fred has volunteered over $60,000 at his expense to repave the taxiway. Another concern raised by the airport was co competition. Is any business going on at Halstead that competes with businesses or operations at the airport? Nope, Halstead does not have any businesses which compete with the fixed base operators. We are a group of aviators adding to the economy of the town through our aviation activities. And the reality is Halstead generates a lot of money for the town. Property taxes, $56,000 a year. Access fees paid to the airport, $21,000 a year. Takeoff and landing fees paid by pilots over $10,000 a year. In addition to all this, the town recognizes revenue generated by our businesses and the businesses on the airport in items such as purchasing fuel, aircraft maintenance, yearly inspections, repairs, parts, equipment, and avionics. All these services, tax dollars go to Isla. So back to my question, why is the town of Isla retaining high-priced Colorado attorneys costing tens of thousands of dollars trying to negate an agreement that's been in place for 60 years? This 
is ridiculous. The town of Islip has a no hassle revenue producing business sitting adjacent to the airport. What we ask is that you keep the access to the runway viable and the town come to their fences and sell this access agreement. And in my last 15 seconds, I'd just like to ask that you ask the airport administration to stop from intimidating our aviation community as was done a few minutes ago by setting up road barriers and threatening to block access to the runway. That sort of behavior is childish and beneath the dignity of what the town is supposed to represent. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Next speaker, Tim Slough. Tim Slough, 180 degree turn here. I want to uh, bring this up. Town demands county vacate homeless, vacate homeless shelter. Paragraph from Newsday. Town of Islip. Jim, could you please speak into the microphone? Okay. Thank you. I forgot my glasses. I have to uh, wing it. So the thing is, so, because, in my view, the people that came here to complain about this homeless shelter, it's an affluent area. Now, we could go back 30 years, and you used to get the same crowd here from Brentwood. And now it's been priceless. The place is packed with people. Some of these houses, I've been over this over and over again. I got a house on Earl Street with nine cars in a driveway. Now, if you do a little tricky math, just an average, they rent those rooms for seven hundred dollars a month, and if only six of them, you come up with like forty-two hundred dollars a month of unreported income. I would love to know how many legal apartments you have in the Oregon Gardens area. Now. As far as this goes with this uh, shelter, I would be willing to sell my house to the county for the going rate because nobody in that area is going to complain because they're all, that place is a freaking mess. You got no idea. I got some pictures here because it looks like somebody tried to do something just before the election. But nothing changed. It's the same. You got people that uh, obey the rules, for instance, as far as commercial vehicles go. They have to pay for a lot. These people don't pay for a lot. So that affects the bottom line of somebody who's got a legitimate business because they're not paying. And then you got all these taxpayers, and then you got all these houses full of people. And you're not paying for government services. The good citizens are paying for their fair share. So what do you got to say about that? You know, really. They're getting free police, free ambulance, free health care. And then for your information out there in uh, Bayshore, if you get the people that we got over by us, here's what you got to look forward to. A party in November more than a mile from my house. They couldn't shut it down till one in the morning, playing that yoga music that immigrants play. So loud, a mile from my house. With my windows closed, okay? Bye. Uh, John C. Leonardo. Hello, Supervisor Carpenter and Honorable Town Council. Congratulations to Supervisor Carpenter and Council Member Lorenzo on your re-elections, and congratulations to uh, Council Member Elect on his election. Since I last spoke before you, federal authorities have released two new USDA inspection reports citing sloth encounters owner Larry Wallach for three new violations of the Federal Animal Welfare Act. In August, Wallach was cited for failing to complete a written program of veterinary care for kangaroos, capybars, a chinchilla, and a sugar glider, and for keeping the sloths in an enclosure with humidity insufficient for their health and welfare. This led to a baby sloth named Cosmo who scratched at his skin. In October, 
Wallach was cited for failing to maintain a safe and effective program for the control of insects, ectoparasites, avian, and mammalian pests. After a large number of black flies were seen in the storefront housing the capybars and kangaroo, the slop exhibit area, and the kitchen. Damningly, these inspection reports also note the continued presence of kangaroos, sloths, and capybaras at 551 Veterans Memorial Highway in Hopog, which is a continued violation of the Honorable Joseph Santorelli's preliminary injunction, of which Wallach has already been found in contempt. Since it does not appear that the town has notified the Honorable Judge Joseph Santorelli about these violations, or made an attempt to collect the more than $30,000 the town is owed per the judge's contempt order, Wallach is now brazenly advertising his unlawful hot hog location as open eight hours a day, six days a week, and urging customers to, quote, come in and see a variety of our pets for sale. The bookings for encounters at this location are also now available during these hours on his public website, slopencounters.com. I ask again, why is Islip continuing to allow slot encounters to exploit animals and endanger his residents in violation of its own town code? And why has Islip failed to fine slot encounters the $30,000 is owed while continuing to tax and fine its own residents? Why aren't the town's attorneys who are paid with the town residents' tax dollars doing their job? Your residents want answers and they want slot encounters shut down now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, Jason Bostonwich. Good afternoon uh, to the town board. Most of you guys know I'm a town master of a uh, Boy Scout troop in Brentwood. Um, I've spoken with several of you over the past several months about an ongoing Eagle Scout project that we have going on. The Eagle candidate is building a Welcome to Brentwood sign. The location has moved uh, several different locations since last April. We have dealt with every level of town government from or, uh, town, county, and state. Uh, we is now going on the corner intersection of 111 and Suffolk Avenue on private property that is owned by Verizon. Verizon has been there's an existing sign there that is being replaced. Verizon is very supportive of this project and this endeavor. The project will feature the uh, community seals and logos to the various organizations, such as the American Legion, Knights of Columbus, uh, Rotary Club, like you see in many other um, communities. Uh, the town has been working on this. He has generated funds. He's been getting uh, community participation involved in this. Uh, where we're at right now, unfortunately, is the permit has been denied from the town planning board. Uh, and we're trying to kind of basically get that worked out, and that's what we need help with. I have contacted several of uh, the board members about this. No answer has been forthcoming. Uh, in the session, it sounds like we have to get a variant from the zoning board, and I'm talking to my Verizon representative, who I've uh, passed that application on to him, so we are getting that worked out. So kind of the two things here we have, number one is uh, if we can get this, uh, support from the town board to at least get this in front of the zoning board to get a variance approval as soon as possible. As the town, you know, he has until he's 18, which is in December. He's been working on this for several months. Support from the town board would be very appreciative of that. And one of the other questions that we've had is the waiving of fees for um, scout projects or youth projects. This is a teenager doing a project in the community and a community that we all agree Brentwood would definitely benefit from. So. There was a planning board fee, and now looking at the zoning board variance is about a $500 fee, and that would be on top of the almost 3000 that he has already had to raise. Uh, I have requested, can those fees be waived? And people said, we'll look into it, and we haven't had an answer. So any support for this from you guys to zoning and finding out if that fee can be waived for the Eagle Project would be appreciative. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. We will look into it. Uh, next speaker, Christine Michelli. I can never speak it. <laughs> okay, it's also in reference to sloth encounters. Um, I am a New York State licensed wildlife rehabber, and I also do local rescue, um, mainly through Islip Township, Avalon Township. Um, and as John mentioned, nothing seems to be going on in the favor of the animals. Um, Larry Wallach is 
doing exactly what he wants to do and nobody's stopping him. I pay taxes in Islip. I work hard in Islip as a volunteer for the state and for Islip Town. Um, we're never called upon for the wildlife. Um, and some of this turns out to be animals that people have no business owning. And that's thanks to Larry, but the town seems to just keep letting it go on and on and on. Um, I had a friend move here from Texas and I was trying to explain to her the situation. And she thought, oh, that's wonderful. I could, you know, we can go there, we can see these animals. No, I tried to explain to her the complete opposite is the case. But he is preying on people who don't know the laws, don't know what the town um, expects, but the town isn't enforcing it. So people like her think this is fantastic. Okay, let's go. And he just certainly not going to tell them it's illegal. He's not going to tell them it's illegal to own them. He's going to continue to prey on people like her that do not know this isn't right. That if you do not know how to take care of these animals, you do not know that they do not belong in a domestic situation. Why anybody would think the kangaroo is a great idea in the town of Islip is beyond me, but the town of Islip doesn't seem to think it's an issue. This is just going on and on and on. If we've already gone to court and he's been served and clearly he's not taking care of the animals as far as sanitary. Um, it doesn't matter. The people who are working for him don't know or aren't licensed to handle these animals. And then the public is coming in. It's a danger to the public and it's a danger to these animals. I've been here before and I've said the same exact thing. It just seems to fall on deaf ears. And as a taxpayer, it really makes me very angry. And as a wildlife rehabber who takes care of animals 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year, no holidays, holidays that you have off, I'm still taking care of animals and still trying to advocate for these animals that others honor. Thank you. Thank you, Christine, for your advocacy. Uh, there are no other cards that have been filled out. I'll uh, entertain a motion. Close the public portion. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo. Second by Councilman Rod Donald. Those in favor? Opposed. Public portion is closed. We will move now to the agenda. Uh, the first item on the agenda this afternoon is a meeting of the Town of Islip Industrial Development Agency. I'll call for a motion for the board to convene. Motion, motion by Councilman uh, O'Connor. Second by Councilman Rod Drone. All those in favor opposed. The uh, meeting is convened, a quorum being present. Good afternoon, Mr. Walser. Good afternoon, and thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the agency board, uh, John Walser, um, uh, Executive Director, 40 Nassau Avenue, Islip, New York. I have several items for your consideration today. The first item would be to approve the minutes from our last board meeting on October 17th of this year. Any questions on the minutes? Hearing none, motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Thank you. The next item for consideration is a preliminary inducement resolution between the agency and Carlton Avenue LLC, located at 29-31 Carlton Avenue in Central Islip. Uh, this project involves the construction of a 101,000 square foot mixed use building in the downtown corridor of Central Islip. Uh, this facility will contain 96 affordable housing units and almost 6,000 square feet of ground floor retail space. Uh, the developer in this project was selected from an RFP process as part of the DRI grant that the town was awarded for uh, downtown Central High School. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guardone. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Thank you. And the last item I have for your consideration is an authorizing resolution for a project that was induced at last month's meeting, a Vita Warehouse Corp located at 60 Orville Drive in Bohemia. Uh, this is a company that assembles packages and distributes vitamins and nutritional supplements, and they are relocating, expanding uh, from their current location in Hong Kong. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Guardone. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Thank you. I have no, uh, no other, other business. business. No other business. For us, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor are opposed, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we move to the meeting of the Town of Islip Resource Recovery Agency. Likewise, I'll entertain a motion to uh, convene. Okay. Most of my councilmen. Uh, <coughs> oh. 
hold off on this particular. Okay, we will, Marty, have yep. a seat. Okay. You have an opportunity for the to minutes, take a little uh, rest. Mike. Thanks, Marty. Sorry. All right. We'll hold that in abeyance and we'll go to item number three. Authorization supervisor entering a license agreement for two parcels of town owned Bay Bottom land for the purpose of shellfish cultivation. Are there any questions? Right. Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Uh, item three. Authorization for supervisor to enter into a license agreement for two parcels of town owned. Wait a minute. We just did that. Four. We did that. So we are up to four. Uh, authorization supervisor to execute a management services agreement for 2024 between the town of Islip and the Islip Resource Recovery Agency for the provision of solid waste support systems in the town of Islip. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Lorenzo. Will those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Um, out. Okay, we will move then to item five, town board approval for the uh, animal shelter and adopt a pet center to accept monetary and non-monetary gifts and gifts of services from the public and or businesses for the calendar year 2024. Any questions? Hearing none, motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item six, authorization for supervisor to enter into a professional services agreement with Lockwood, Kessler, and Bartlett, Inc. for plans and specifications for the electrical upgrade at the town's self shellfish culture facility. Any questions? Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guardrone. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Item seven. Authorization for supervisor to enter into a contract extension with Diverka and Bartolucci engineers and architects PC to provide professional and technical services for monitoring, sampling, and reporting landfill gas at the Stonia Road landfill. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item eight, town board authorization to clean up or secure certain properties in the town of Islip. Mr. And now she, good to see you. Good afternoon, Madam Supervisor, members of the town board and the town clerk. We have a robust little list here to tackle. Yes. Um, and my appearance is Jeffrey Panashi, Assistant Town Attorney, 655 Main Street, Icebrook, New York. I do have 15 matters on for your consideration here today. Number one is to clean up the premises located at 1 Lexington Avenue in Brentwood. On this vacant property, there now exists high grass, overgrown vegetation, and litter and debris. It constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was provided to all known persons with a property interest in this premises. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Thank you. Number two is to clean up the premises located at 9 Alice Road in West Islip. On this vacant property, there now exists high grass, overgrown vegetation, an unregistered vehicle. I'm sorry. Um, and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice to this hearing was provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises, and I believe there is someone here um, with respect to this particular property that just approached as we were speaking. I'm sorry, what did you say, Jeff? I, I hadn't had an opportunity to speak to the individual that was here with respect to this property, but based on the information that was provided to me by code enforcement today, uh, detailing its current condition, I am presenting the resolution for a vote. Okay, we have a motion uh, and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? Aye. Approved. Number three is to board up. The second was made by Councilman Lorenzo. Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Number three is to board up and clean up the premises located at 12 Carlton Avenue and Ice Club Terrace. On this vacant and unsecured property, there now exists a garage door with a hole allowing access to the accessory structure, a vehicle and boats in various states of disrepair, as well as high grass overgrown vegetation and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was provided to all known persons of the property interest in this premises. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? 
opposed, approved. Number four, to board and oh, clean up the premises. Ask, um, Sorry. One thing, I just want to verify. Uh, the uh, 9 Alice Road, the date taken on the photo, is that a typo? Because it says 1 slash 14. I'm assuming this was November 14th? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Continue. Number four is to board and clean up the premises located at 27 Jackson Avenue in Brentwood. On this vacant and unsecured property that now exists open doors and windows, allowing access to the interior of the dwelling, litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises. Any questions? Motion by Councilman uh, Guadron, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Thank you. Number five, to board and clean up the premises located at 43 West Bridge Drive in Holbrook. On this vacant and unsecured property, there now exists an accessory structure with unlocked doors, allowing access to its interior. An RV parked on the property with an open door, allowing access to its interior, as well as high grass, overgrown vegetation, and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was also provided to all known persons with property interest in this premises. Any, any questions? Hearing none, motion by Councilman Cochran. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Number six, to clean up the premises located at 45 Carlton Avenue in East Islip. On this vacant property, there now exists three unregistered motor vehicles, overgrown vegetation and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Thank you. Number seven has been withdrawn because it is now in compliance. Number eight has been withdrawn due to a recent change in ownership. Number nine, to clean up the premises located at 501 Corbin Place in West Islip. On this vacant property, there now exists high grass, overgrown vegetation, and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises. Mm. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Thank you. Number 10, to clean up the premises located at 731 Smithtown Avenue in Bohemia. On this vacant property, there now exists an accessory structure in a state of decay, high grass, overgrown vegetation, and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing is provided to all known persons with the property interest in the premises. Any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman uh, O'Connor, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Thank you. Number 11, to clean up the premises located at 959 Montauk Highway in Oakdale. On this vacant property, there now exists an unregistered vehicle, high grass, overgrown vegetation, and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. The notice of this hearing was provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises. Any questions? Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Number 12, to clean up the premises located at 969 Manor Lane in Bayshore. On this vacant property, there now exists a boat in a state of disrepair, high grass, overgrown vegetation, and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice to this hearing was provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises. Motion, I'm sorry, any questions? None. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo. Second by Councilman Conkren. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Thank you. Number 13, to board and clean up the premises located at 1068 Connect Plot Avenue in Central Islip. On this vacant and unsecured property, there now exists an unsecured dwelling and accessory structure, unregistered vehicles that are in various states of disrepair, high grass, overgrown vegetation, and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises. Um, Jeff, can I get the copy of the photos, please? Somehow my packet just disappeared. No, no, I'm looking, I'm looking at it, oh, but I'd extra? like a copy for my, my file. So just get me a copy of the photos. I will do that. Thank you. Any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second 
by Councilman Gaudron. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed for three. Thank you. Number 14, the board and clean up the premises located at 1522 North Gardner Drive in Bayshore on this vacant and unsecured property that now exists in unsecured garage, overgrown vegetation and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing is provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Guardrone, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. Thank you. And finally, number 15, to clean up the premises located at 1547 North Thompson Drive in Bayshore on this vacant property, there now exists high grass, overgrown vegetation, and litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice that this hearing was also provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second. Second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Okay, we will move then to item number nine, which are the appropriation transfers. Are there any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second by Councilman uh, O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item 10. Um, all the bid awards. Again, are there any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion by Councilman Cochran. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. We then go to the option year resolutions. Item 11 on the agenda. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Gordon. Second. Second by Councilman uh, Cochran. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Uh, we now have item 12, which is the meeting of the Town of Isle Farm Trade Zone Board. Motion to convene Motion. by Councilman O'Connor. Second by Councilman Wadron. All those in favor? Opposed? We are convened. The forum being present. And uh, Mr. Hemingway, you may proceed. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the Foreign Trade Zone Board. My name is Brad Hemingway. I'm the Executive Director at the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone Authority located at 1 Trade Zone Drive in Ronkonkoma, New York. I have three items for your consideration today. First item being approval of the minutes from July 18th, 2023, meeting of the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone Board. Any question on the minutes? No. Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Uh, next item is authorization for the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone Authority to amend a sublease with Trade Zone Court Holdings LLC, known as Parcel 6, otherwise known as 101 Trade Zone Court, on Concoma, New York, described in the tax map of Suffolk County as District 0500, Section 150.01, Block 01.00, Lot 010.000, consisting of 3.187 acres. Did you have fun with that? <laughs> 3.187 acres. Got it? Got it? Any questions no, on that? Know. Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Uh, last item is adoption of the Foreign Trade Zone Authority's 2024 budget. Are there any questions? I know everyone's reviewed it. Uh, do you have a motion? Question. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is approved. And if there's no further any business to come before us, I want to entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman uh, Lorenzo. All in favor, opposed, we stand adjourned. Thank you, sir. Uh, we will move now to item 13. Okay, are we ready to handle number two? Okay, so. Having said that, Commissioner Ballou, if you would come forward. We'll try this again. We will uh, convene the meeting of the Town of Islip Resource Recovery Agency Board. Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second. Second. By Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor, opposed. We uh, stand uh, meeting with the uh, quorum being present. Mr. Ballou, you may proceed. Madam Chair, members of the agency board, Martin Ballou, 
president of the Islip Resource Recovery Agency, 401 Main Street, Islip, New York. I have several items uh, for consideration today. The first being the approval of the minutes for the October 17th, 20, 2023 agency board meeting. Are there any questions on the minutes? Motion. <clears throat> motion. Oh, second. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Cochran to approve the minutes. All those in favor opposed, they are approved. Next item is a resolution authorizing the execution of a management services agreement for the year 2024 between the Islip Resource Recovery Agency and the Town of Islip for the, for the provision of solid waste support systems in the Town of Islip. Are there any questions? Hearing on motion. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman Guardron. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Next item is a resolution authorizing the president to enter into a contract with Germano and Cahill PC to provide general legal and litigation support services for the year 2024. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Next item is a resolution authorizing the president to enter into a contract extension with Diverker and Bartolucci engineers and architects PC for the calendar year 2024 to provide semi-annual and annual post-closure groundwater monitoring, sampling, and reporting for the Blydenburg Road landfill complex. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Guardrone, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor, opposed to approve. Next item is a resolution authorizing the president to enter into a contract extension with the Berker and Bartolucci engineers and architects BC to provide professional and technical services for monitoring, sampling, and reporting of greenhouse gas, landfill gas, and volatile or organic compounds at the Blydenburg Road and Lincoln Avenue landfills for calendar year 2024. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. And the last item is a resolution authorizing the president to enter into a contract amendment to contract uh, IRRA 2016-7 between the agency and Lockwood, Kessler, and Bartlett, Inc., LKB, to provide professional engineering design services related to phase three construction at the Blydenburg Mainfield. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed, it is approved. And that uh, concludes the uh, business course? of the agency. Hearing none, motion to adjourn by Councilman Guardron, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, we stand adjourned. Thank and you. have a happy, uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you, Marty. Same to you. Thank you. Uh, item uh, 13 on the agenda authorization supervisor to enter into a contract with Intellitech. Uh, Security Systems LLC for PSC 1-2023, Monitoring, Maintenance, and Installation of Alarms. Any questions? Motion by Councilman uh, O'Connor, second by Councilman Lorenzo. Cochran. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Item 14, Authorization Supervisor to, to exercise the option to extend the agreement with Calais America for the final one-year extension period. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Cochran. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Item 15, Town Board Approval for the Establishment of Town of Islip Information Technology Steering Committee. Are there any questions? Motion by Councilman Gardron. Second by Councilman uh, O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Uh, next, we move to item 16, Town Board Approval for the Town of Islip Youth Bureau to host drop-off sites throughout the town to collect pass-through donations for the Youth Bureau Holiday Toy Drive Program. Any questions? Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second, Second. By Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. 17, Town Board Approval for the Town of Islip Youth Bureau to host drop-off sites uh, throughout the town to collect donations for the Winter Coats Donation Drive Program. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor, opposed, approved. 18, are the special events. Uh, again, we have a number of really interesting, exciting things happening across the town, a lot of holiday uh, events. 
And um, yes. Uh, or like remote? No, just one. Save over one. Okay. Well, we have to be included in the floor, so I'll draw the board's attention. Agenda item number 18. Approval by the board is subject to uh, notification to the Suffolk County via our motion to approve. So, this is a conditional approval on item F only. Uh, the rest are complete. Thank you. And I uh, appreciate everyone's efforts, especially Councilman Lorenzo, on trying to get that last minute paperwork in, and hopefully it will arrive in time. Um, An annual event. It was an annual event. Yeah. Yes, there you go. Uh, motion by Councilman motion. Lorenzo or um, Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor, opposed, it is approved. Item 19, authorization for the supervisor to terminate the professional services agreement with M&J engineers for design and construction management services for the CI downtown revitalization project. Any questions? Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor, opposed, it is approved. And that takes us to item 20, which is authorization of supervisor entry into a professional services agreement with NB5, New York engineers, architects, landscape architects, and surveyors for design and construction management services for the CI downtown revitalization project. Same motion, same second. All those in favor, opposed, it is approved. Item 21, authorization of supervisor to execute a second one-year contract renewal with Deal Concrete Corporation for contract DPD 5-21 streetscapes sidewalks. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Cochran. Second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed, it is approved. Item 22, authorization of supervisor to execute all documents necessary with Anna Electric Corp for additional electrical services in connection with the main terminal building, uh, MEP upgrades at Long Island LaGuardia Airport. Are there any questions? Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. Item 23, authorization with supervisor to execute any and all documents with Hogland Energy to award the on-call airfield electrical repair and maintenance services agreement. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Wadron. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. Item 24, authorization for supervisor to execute any and all documents to execute a change order with Autism Interiors, Austin, I'm sorry, Austin Interiors Inc. for additional general contracting services in connection with the main terminal building, MEP upgrades at Long Island MacArthur Airport. Any questions? Motion? By Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 25, authorization to supervise to execute an agreement with the County of Suffolk for the purposes of entering into a law enforcement personnel reimbursement agreement between the Transportation Security Administration and Long Island MacArthur Airport. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed, it is approved. Item 26, authorization of supervisor to execute agreement with Sky Synergy LLC for the purpose of providing professional consulting services for development, implementation, and improvement of the airport's air service development program. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item 27. Authorization with the supervisor to execute an agreement with John Jamata Consulting LLC to provide professional services for Long Island MacArthur Airport. Any questions? Motion. Aye. Okay. By Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Item 28 appointment of Brad Wilson as a member of the, uh, to the Town of Islip Planning Board. Um, I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second, second by Councilman uh, O'Connor. All those in favor? 
oppose agree. Item 29, authorization to supervise and execute an agreement granting the Long Island Railroad a permanent exclusive easement for the single cut project. Any questions? Is there a motion? A motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman uh, Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 30, town board approval to symbolically rename Serene Place at Susing Boulevard in Hopog to PO Thomas Brophy Way. Uh, I make that motion, second by Councilman uh, Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed, it is approved. Item 31, uh, authorization for supervisor to enter into an agreement with Backflow Specialist Inc. to perform RPZ testing on Suffolk County Water Authority's pipes located in all town of Islip facilities. Any question? Councilman Cochran Second. made the motion. Second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Item 32. Authorization for supervisor to use the Board of Cooperative Education Services of Nassau County contract 19 slash 20 dash 045 extension 2D passenger cars, vans, and trucks to purchase vehicles on behalf of various departments. Any questions? Aye. Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second. By Councilman Cochran, all those in favor, opposed, approved. Item 33, authorization with the town clerk to advertise for public hearing to consider amending the town of Islip Uniform Traffic Code. I'll make that motion, second. By Councilman Lorenzo, all those in favor, opposed, approved. Item 34, authorization supervisor to enter into various agreements for various programs or events to be held throughout the town. Any questions? Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, it is approved. Uh, item 35, town board approval to deposit and secure all many, monies in JP Morgan or TC, uh, should that not be TD Bank? Okay, so it was just the, uh, as long as the resolution is correct. Okay, uh, received by the receiver of taxes for the 2023-2024 tax year and in interest. Any questions? Motion? Motion? Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Item 36, town board approval to extend the deadline for senior citizens to pay 23-24 real property taxes on their principal residence without interest or penalty on or before June 7th, 2024, provided that such senior citizens have received an enhanced star exemption pursuant to real property tax law section 425 uh, for or a senior exemption pursuant to real property tax law section 467 for the 2023-24 tax year. Are there any questions? It basically gives them some extra days to make that tax payment. Motion by Councilman uh, Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 37, authorization for the supervisor to execute an agreement with J.P. Morgan Chase for the payment of courier services provided by Rapid Armor Corporation to the receiver of taxes pursuant to general municipal law, section 10-4E. Any questions? Motion? Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman uh, Cochran, sorry. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Item 38. Authorization with the supervisor to execute an agreement with greater data and mailing to print, assemble, and mail tax bills, receipts, and notices. Are there any questions? Motion? Motion, Motion by uh, Councilman Cochran, second. second. By Councilman O'Connor, all those in favor? Opposed, it is approved. Uh, town board approval to restore the December town board change of zone hearing to Thursday, December 14th at 5 p.m. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman uh, Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 40, authorization for the town clerk to advertise for public hearing to amend chapter 35 of the uniform town code entitled noise. Any questions? Hearing none, I'll make that motion. Second by Councilman uh, um, Guadron. All those in favor? Right. Opposed, it is approved. And I do believe that is the agenda. Um, motion, motion to adjourn after we wish everyone a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. Take care. Be well.